All right, I want to give you a little instruction on how to use this FET animation called Gravity and Orbits. So we'll start by clicking. And uh, you hear my dog in the background. Don't worry about that. You probably will. So this is where it starts out. It said the sun and the earth. This is all my questions will be at this, about the sun and the earth. Um, it's not doing anything until you press play. I just want to show you a few things. Um, it's a zoom feature. I haven't touched this. If this is obvious, right? You can change the speed. It's the play button. You can advance or rewind. This will show you the days. And if you want to clear the days, it's a clear button. And if you did a lot of different things, you just want to go back to the start. You hit this kind of refresh button. But so you, when you start, it'll, it'll be on the earth and the, the sun. Keep it that way. Uh, here's how you turn the gravity on and off, obviously. I, I think it's a good idea to, to check these three things right away. You can, you know, it's all self-explanatory. You can see that the distance of the earth to the sun is two units. You know, I don't know what that is, but it's two units. So when I ask you to change the distance to three quarters, you can, this is three quarters and this is 1.25. Now, let's suppose you've made a lot of changes you want to get back. So we hit the refresh button. Everything's back to normal. And you can, because there are a lot of things you can change in this animation. You can change the star's mass, in this case, the sun's mass uh, with the slider. And the first set of questions, you just want to keep it right there. You can change the Earth's mass and, mass and see what effect that has. And that's basically it. Here's the play button. And uh, let's try a few things like changing the mass of the sun to 1.5, see what that has. Of course, the mass increases, the gravity increases, uh, the gravitational force is greater. You can see this red arrow, red arrow is the velocity um, and the blue arrow is the force. Uh, looks like with, oh, that's interesting, kind of a slingshot effect. I don't even know, I think we've lost orbit at that point. Uh, we've changed the, what, oh, wait a second. I, I must have reduced the mass. So I reduced the mass of the sun. I might have said I increased it, but I reduced it. The sun doesn't have enough strong enough gravity to hold the earth, and it flies off into space. Um, but that's my dog again. Uh, well, it came back. Good. I'm going to show you something else. Reset everything, and we'll click these things. Um, if your planet is moving... And obviously you can't change it. It'd be tough to grab it and change the distance while it's moving. So that's why you hit pause. Let's put, these, let's put the grid back on. So here's how you can now move it closer. You can see when it gets closer, the blue arrows get bigger. And also pretty cool because the both of these arrows are equal because we know that the pulling force from the sun to the earth is equal to the uh, the pulling the you know, these two forces are equal. It's called the third law, and you guys know that full well. Um, pretty good. Um, so that's how you move the distance. It starts at, remember, it starts at 2. So if I say 0.75, there's 0.75, and this would be 1.25. And once you do that, you can hit play. And whoa, <laughs> that was too close, wasn't it? So let's reset it. And... Uh, Let's see, if you move it just a little bit, it doesn't crash in. Obviously, if it's too close, it'll crash in. Let's see, let's move it a little bit. Here we go. So what's also kind of cool, you'll see that you, if you change the force sheet, it goes from a circular orbit to an elliptical one, so the sun off center. Most of the planets have an elliptical orbit. Um, I believe the Earth's orbit around the sun is pretty circular, uh, but um, not quite exactly. They're not all circles. That was a big insight. I think it was Kepler who realized the the uh, orbits around the sun for most of these planets are elliptical. Everybody at the time thought they were all circular because they considered circle, the circle the perfect shape. Anyway, so, yeah, have I covered everything? Oh, here's another interesting thing to do. Let's see if you – I don't think I asked this, but what – obviously, if you change the uh, distance or the, the various things, the – the, this actually changed. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's put this back here, too. Um, in the original situation, of course, it's going to take 365 Earth days to get back. So if you ever want to find, see how the orbital period changes, like, for instance, let's make the sun 1.25. Um, and you can see how long it takes the Earth to get around with the 
sun being more massive, it shouldn't take 365 days. And let's see, it should definitely take less than 365 days. We'll stop it right over, uh, yeah, here. It takes 282, no surprise. You can clear this and start again. I think I covered everything. Remember, I haven't played with this. This is probably useful, changing the motion, making it faster or slower. Actually, fast fast forward, slow motion. Let me try this. Actually, I haven't tried this, but it's fast forward. Oh, yeah, it just increases the speed. This goes slow motion. Pretty cool. You can see the 90 degrees between the force and the uh, velocity. I think that covers everything. You should be able to answer the questions from the uh, lab now. I don't like that in slow motion. It's, it's going normal, yeah. Okay, that is it.